Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so you put me in front of this awesome audience right here. Uh, once again, my name is Petyo Ivanov. Um, I'm a product manager at a company called Go42. Uh, so I talked to some people before the, the talk and I guess most of you are familiar with our product. For those of you who are not, uh, we are in the application integration space. Uh, the interesting thing is that we are integrating applications on the client, essentially. Uh, if you're familiar with companies like ChartIQ or OpenFin, we're pretty similar to them. Uh, what we do, what we focus on, what our differentiator is essentially, is that we are focused on the integration aspect, not only on the deployment. Now, the topic of today's talk is uh, about progressive web applications, uh, essentially not only progressive web applications in general, but how they work on the desktop and why we think that this is a big deal and possibly a game changer for our industry. Now, I am quite conscious because I'm going to make some bold claims here, including that progressive web apps are a big deal. And I do want to make uh, a certain, like, um, like to back my claims in a, in a manner to see that we are not just wasting your time with false predictions because uh, you know it's it's quite a big deal for us. So I do want to open up with an announcement that uh, so far we are already in the process of doing heavy investments, Go42 as a company, by allocating significant amount of development resources towards a brand new open source PWA based version of Go42. That's how much of a big deal it is for us, essentially. That's why we are backing it with uh, an open source product based on that. Now, just to gauge the audience a little bit, how many of you know what PWA stands for? Cool. Uh, how many of you have developed PWAs for the desktop? Oh, cool. Great. Now, this means that you're probably going to enjoy the PWA crash course, which I have prepared. It's going to be short, actually. So, PWA is a short acronym for uh, progressive web applications. Google coined this term, and it's part of their web-centric strategy, essentially, uh, where they are trying to displace their competition uh, in the application development space. So, what they come up with is, like, PWA is a set of requirements which any web application can implement. And if you do that with your web application, uh, Google rewards you with an additional opportunity and the browser actually you know, actively urges the user to install your existing web application on their desktop or on their mobile device. And it essentially starts behaving like uh, first-class desktop application, uh, like uh, an, an application written in .NET or Java or something like that. Now, um, the initiative first started on their native platform, on, on the Android device. And let me show you how this actually, this process works. It's going to be a very short video. So what you're seeing here is an Android device. Uh, it has loaded the progressive web application in the browser and Now, I assume that, you've, uh, that those of you who have Android devices are familiar with, uh, with this interaction over here. The way they describe it sounds quite innocently, like you can add this website to your home screen. Essentially, it gets promoted uh, to, uh, to an application status like one you can obtain from the App Store. Now, that's all fair and square. That's been available for quite a while. Uh, the recent change they did uh, this summer was that they brought this very same capability to the desktop. I'm going to show you how it works. It's again a very short and enjoyable video. So that's Google Maps and on the, here you can see by the way the uh, capital of Bulgaria, Sofia. And so within three seconds and I would actually like to replay this again because it's, um, it's quite interesting. 
So within three seconds, what you see here, it's loaded in the browser. By the way, this is Edge, uh, but Chromium does the same thing as well. Now they share the same core. I took Google Maps and now it's available as a native application on my desktop. It's available in the, in the start menu. It's also available on the desktop as, uh, as a shortcut. Actually, I, I like the way they did uh, the tier route. So the, the, the tab is no longer present in the browser. Now it's available in its own top level window. Now, this experience might seem familiar to you. Actually, Google did not uh, invent this on their own. You can see this as, as a progression of uh, the concept which Electron first brought to the desktop. Essentially, you can host a web application on the, on, uh, on the desktop through a, through a container. Now, this has loads of advantages compared to Electron. First of all, the installation process happens through the browser. Uh, it's, uh, it shares the browser core. Uh, it does not copy the Chromium engine in, uh, in the application itself. It doesn't bundle it there. Uh, you can think of it as a small shortcut, actually it has a uh, small size. Now, I do urge you to try what I just showed you uh, here on the desktop. You look for the small plus sign in the address bar. Uh, I want to show you some great PWA applications. First one is Google Maps uh, themselves, the one I just showed you. Another great one, and uh, people are, like, if you are Microsoft shop, you're probably using Office 365 as well. The home screen of Office 365, the one you're seeing down here, is also a progressive web application. You can install it here and you can browse all the 365 applications from there as well. It's quite engaging and useful. It also offers great UX patterns. So when, once you load this page, you, you see um, a file which was recently edited by my colleague, so forth and so forth. It's quite inspirational. Um, a next application which was recently announced was Outlook. So Outlook is a progressive web application itself. So you, you see that there is something which is like quite unthinkable here. And can you imagine 10 years ago, Google introducing a new technology and Microsoft onboarding their properties on top of it. Now we are living in very interesting times, don't you think so? Um, another application which was announced after I made those slides is uh, Google Drive itself. It's also a progressive web application. Now it's, it's cool, it's quite exciting. You can see those apps, they look great. We're not Google and Microsoft, unfortunately. Uh, but what we think well, in, the fintech, in the fintech industry is that we can take advantage of this technology somehow. Now, let me show you what we are thinking of in the context of fintech. We're not dealing with uh, Google Maps and Outlook and so on. In Google, uh, in Google, in Google 42, we're dealing with desktops that look like this. These are the traders' desktop. So a fairly common use case we're facing uh, with our prospects and customers is usually uh, a bank has to deliver a set, a multiple set of many pre-configured and integrated web applications to a remote desktop, to a, to a remote client desktop. Now, some of them are delivering those solutions to their internal infrastructure, uh, which is like fairly easy because you have the buy now already from, uh, from the executives, but some of them are also delivering them to other organizations. They're transforming themselves into service providers. Now, the only way you can do this currently, if you want to deliver such set of a pre-configured application, is to use a container. Um, a container like Go42, for example, OpenFin or ChartEQ, fair and square. However, the containers themselves need to be additionally installed on those external desktops. And I assume that you're already catching the pain point here. This installation may take a while because it needs to be approved by the IT security department. And the installation is just the first step. The container itself also has to be scanned for security issues, so forth and so forth. It also has to be updated regular basis. It's a problem that we would like to avoid if possible. And it looks like with PWAs, we might just be able to do that, right? Uh, so, a few months ago, we decided to do a technical proof of concept initially and see what we can do. And the results were really promising. So we moved forward. 
and I'm going to now try to squeeze in uh, several months of development into a few sentences. So what, what we did was that we took the existing core of our commercial product, Glue 42 desktop, and we compiled it as a JavaScript uh, module, which we hosted in the browser in running as a background thread. Uh, some of you might be familiar with this term, it's called service worker or uh, web worker. Doesn't really matter, it runs off the main thread of the browser. Uh, it also allows multiple com applications to communicate to each other through it. It's like a shared resource available in all, in all windows. Now we took that, um, in addition to that, we took um, the window management features available in Glue 42 desktop and we ported them to the web environment. It looks quite promising. And I'm really excited to show you uh, how this actually looks in the context of PWA. Now that's a very, very mint conditioned desktop. Looks like a virtual machine to me. But, yeah. Don't mind the pop-up, this is not part of the presentation. Now what you just saw here uh, is uh, actually a fairly complicated example, but these are the examples we are facing uh, in, in the production environments we are dealing with. And it's fairly impressive, at least to me, because what I just saw was how you can take uh, a web application running in the browser, instantly promote it to the desktop kind of experience, and not only that, you can have it host additional web applications in various frames, top level windows, and on top of that, integrate them in real time by exchanging data between the different shells you, over, you have, the, between the different uh, applications you have over here. Just to clarify something, what you see is not just a single web application. These are actually multiple web applications developed independently. Um, if you're familiar with the term uh, microphone tents, this is exactly microphone tents in action. And these applications, some of them might be uh, existing web applications you have in your, in your infrastructure, some of them are, might be something uh, you're developing right now, exchange data. Um, so exchanging the data is possible in the web browser itself. The great part here is that they are hosted in those native looking windows where you're no longer burdened with the additional UI of the browser itself. It's quite a native experience, so quite exciting. Uh, these are actually just a few of the capabilities our new product is going to offer. Uh, I'm getting to the point where I should announce its name actually because referring it to it as a new product is like a mouthful. We're going to call it Glue 42 Core. So 
to to sum up uh, and I have a missing slide here which is actually quite interesting but um, I'm going to stay here and I'm going to, to, to give the rest of the presentation over this picture so Blue 42 core is a PWA oriented uh, product similar to what Go42 desktop is offering right now. Its primary purpose is to integrate multiple web applications in a single coherent work workflow. Uh, the reason why you would need such kind of integration is because some of those applications you may have bought from third-party vendors, some of the, them might be developed in-house, uh, and so on and so on. It's going to be entirely browser-based, it's going to live to be fully operational in all modern browsers, on all modern operating systems. The part which I'm most excited about, and actually this is the crux of my presentation, is that Goo42 Core, like I mentioned in the beginning, is going to be completely open source. And that's a very, very bold step for us. Again, it really resonates quite well with the previous presentations we saw over here. And I'm really happy that we managed to get an internal buy-in from our stakeholders uh, because we do believe that by making Go42 Core uh, open source, we are going to do the right thing for our existing customers, also for the community in general. Um, uh, it's obligatory to mention that uh, Go42 Core is going to support the existing Finos standards we're going to support FDC3 uh, in there. Yes. Um, we are also having uh, very interesting conversations with uh, James from Finos about the possibilities which such kind of a platform would bring. And this is really important. I'll give you uh, one example why, why we think that this will benefit the community and us as a company. Right now, FDC3 doesn't have an open source reference implementation. To test FDC3, you have to obtain a commercial container, you have to install it on your desktop, and so forth and so forth. Having a web-based open source platform that supports FDC3 will allow you to get up and running in a minute. This is really important, not only for the buyers, but for the sellers themselves. They will, be, uh, they will easily be able to test their implementation, their FDC3 implementation, and, further make, and make sure that it actually works with zero hassle. Actually, the funny thing is that uh, the, the code name for our project was Go42.0, but uh, there were some implications around the name uh, 420, code name for marijuana and so forth. Um, it didn't fly well in the company after we realized that. So, yeah, well, that's it. Any questions? I have a um, lots of the open source I've encountered before comes with some commercial use restrictions. Will there be any commercial use, or will I be able to take Blue 42 Core, develop a commercial product, make massive revenue off it without any, paying you anything or having any? Um, actually, uh, we are not uh, going to impose any restrictions on Go42 Core itself. We are not going to come up with some shady non-startup license. At least that's what my CEO promised to me uh, when, uh, when we engaged there. Um, yeah. So, um, a thing which I forgot to mention uh, is when is this going to happen, because this is just an announcement right now. So, Go42 Core is currently developed in GitHub. We are about to flip the switch uh, very soon, um, probably a month from now. So if you are um, excited about uh, uh, the project, please let me know immediately after the presentation because I'm missing the last slide here, uh, which includes the URL. Uh, so we are looking for people who are interested in getting an early stage preview, uh, before we actually flip the switch because uh, we are we want to discuss some things immediately right now uh, about use cases and validating what what our assumptions are further so, so one Quick, really quick, you can't ask. So, it's, 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 it's <laughs> so open source is two things, right? especially for banks. One is free software mm -hmm. and the other is a community and that's a big focus from James. And so we did the open source bridges for Bloomberg and Reuters in open manner. And basically it's a couple of banks that just download it, use it, stack us very much and do nothing. Lost my and we're really, we're really so hoping cool. that we can build a community here. So we're looking for feedback from people who want to get involved, not just mm -hmm. download the software. Frequently I'm allowed to do that. 
Great. Well, can I ask for a final round of applause for Petjo and all of our speakers?